In Germany, betta fish are sold in tanks, not in small cups. I spoke with German biologist and scientific consultant for pet husbandry, Dr. Stefan K. Hetz, to learn more about their standards. So thank you so much, Dr. Hetz, for speaking with us. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure for me to, to talk about fish. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, can you start by explaining your background a bit and how you became interested in fish physiology and animal mm -hmm. welfare? Uh, so the first time I saw a big tank was uh, at, at a friend when I was in the age of 12. So with 14, I had enough money to, to get a tank for myself. And uh, after that, I, I, I watched my fish and I became a, a, a serious aquarist. So uh, I soon had more and more tanks. It's like, like yeah, like some aquarists do. Uh, when I decided to study biology, I first thought I would go directly into fish, but I started with insects because I met some fish guys that said, oh, no employment, uh, bad conditions and so on. So I studied insects. But in the end, uh, after my PhD, I went to Berlin. I studied in Erlangen. I went to Berlin and then I ended up with a, uh, at, a, a, at a, a, a group, a working group who was, who was studying fish. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, I was still doing some insect stuff at that time. But I was supposed to, to be the, the, the guy who runs the animal keeping facilities. And they did a lot of, uh, uh, of studies on, on, on how uh, aquaria work, how filtering works and stuff like that. And it's a, a little bit about animal welfare, how these fish will cope with the uh, uh, water change and stuff like that. And that was really fun. And I went to several meetings, um, physiology meetings, and there were, there were almost always a lot of people talking about fish and uh, my interest was grown again to to work on fish and so i did it um 2019 i decided to 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 stop uh my university uh part and uh work at the uh, ccf and uh, there i was the consultant for pet husbandry and international affairs and I'm still doing a lot of scientific work, reading papers about fish. I'm still in contact with the colleagues from former time. And this was the reason why I'm still still in fish. That's so cool that you could turn your passion into such a, a meaningful career. And then also you have the, the, the science, but then also you're a fish keeper yourself. So you have a really good breadth of knowledge. Something I really wanted to get your perspective on is the way that um, the betta fish are sold in the small cups. So like in, in the U.S. and then in, in other countries, this is an actual cup that they're uh, sold in. So at major... Oh, are, they, are they sold in or, or transported in? What, what do you mean? They're sold in these cups. I think people intuitively sense that's pretty harmful. Um, mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. what your perspective is on that? So, so there are there are several things to 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 watch. If you are, uh, uh, I think for 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 me, a transport for sh for a short distance or for uh, for a limited time in in such a uh, uh, in such a small cup would be okay. So the fish ha has to turn around, has to go up and down because he's breathing air or something. That would be okay. But if you are selling them in, in, in such cups, so the minimum uh, in, in Germany, there is a, uh, they, they do it differently. So uh, there is a, a, a requirement to have at least uh, uh, several liters and the tank uh, has to be equipped with some filter or some running water running inside, but not running too fast because betters don't like that if the water is running too fast. Keep the temperature stable, keep the water parameter stable, and then you have to have a, a, a surrounding where one part or two parts are dark or something, and you have to, you have, to have some enrichment where the animal can retreat. Uh, but here you can look from every side and 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 to probably turn around and also touch it maybe if if you are selling uh, these animals and this would not be allowed in germany and i uh, in my person i would not i would not do that i would not 
I would not like to do this because it's stressful for the animals. Uh, if you go to, a, uh, to, to some, some kind of show or something uh, where, we, uh, where the animals are sold for, say, two hours, then they are probably offered in, in small plastic cups or something like that, but only for two hours. And then you have to put it back into a bigger, bigger container and, and transport it, them at home. If you're trying to, to, to sell them in Germany, uh, there are recommendations from the competent authorities what you, that you have to obey. And this is, the requirements are lower than, uh, than the standards you would have if you keep them at home in a tank for permanent, uh, for a permanent time, which is, which is different from a transitory time of two or three weeks. And, uh, but but it's, a, it's a good start. Yeah, I mean, that, that touches on something else I was going to ask, which is, how is fish keeping culture in Germany? Like, are you, are you saying that there's actually a law that uh, requires people to have a certain tank size in their homes, in private residences? Mm -hmm. oh, wow. There are some, some minimum requirements from the, from the German authorities. And the minimum requirements are, say, at the tank size should be about 50 liters. That's a, a, a 60 centimeter by 30 or 30 centimeters, it's uh, not uh, not 50 gallons, but 50 liters, that's the difference. That's about but, uh, gallons. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. How many gallons are these? About 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's quite, a, quite a good size for starting. What is your thought on a uh, minimum 19 liter, which is five gallon, because that's what, uh, I hear most commonly recommended for betta fish for one single betta fish is 19 gallon. I mean, sorry, 19 liter minimum. What do you think about uh, that? In, in Germany, for uh, for a permanent display, the, the uh, it's it's uh, uh, the minimum requirements are 54 liters. That yeah. was the tank I told you, yeah. 60 by 30 by 30. But uh, I know if, that you can keep uh, single betters if you if you don't have them together with other fish in smaller tanks. It works, of course. And uh, if you do it in your in your uh, in your uh, privately at home, it's a little bit uh, yeah. Some some say okay, we don't we don't discuss that. We 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 say minimum requirements are fifty four liters. But I know it works from people who breed betters, and then the males are set separately in, in, in one tank. They have probably 20 liters or something for, for one better or something. And this works. It's just for a single fish. Right. And can um, I ask, how is it enforced if it's in a private residence? Like if you saw someone keeping a betta fish in a small, like a four liter bowl, how yeah. would that be enforced? So uh, you mean you mean what 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 happens if you do it and someone uh, accuses you that are uh, you're not obeying animal welfare? Yeah. Yeah. If if uh, if someone uh, if someone phones the competent authorities and say there is a guy who has maybe twenty betters in in just one beer glass or something, and they they will they will probably show up. Uh, probably show up with police or something, and they say, okay, you have to do it differently. That's pretty amazing to hear um, because it's uh, just a completely different situation in the United States. It's a, the, 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 the problem in, in all these in all these discussion is at the moment uh, we, we do not know. Uh, we, we do we really do not know if this, if this really harms the fish uh, seriously. We, we do not know, but the probability that accidentally something can happen is increasing immensely. And uh, uh, if, you, if you want to keep an animal, you, you normally think about you want to keep your animal, that the animal can live, live well, can live, can live in a nice condition and so on, and not say, okay, come on, uh, I will keep it at the minimum. Uh, the betters are, some betters are really expensive. And I don't understand because uh, some people say, okay, I, I, I spent uh, $50 on a, on, a, on a single male better because it's a special breed or something. And it looks very nice. And then on the other hand, they, maybe maybe a dollar or something on a, on a small cup uh, of plastic or something. Or I use a used cup where I bought some fruit or some drink or something. Yes. Yeah. No sense for me. 
I always say, okay, if I have an animal, I spend minimum uh, 10 times the money on, on the acquirement to make sure that the animal has a nice environment and so on. Oh, definitely. I mean, you, yeah, you have to prioritize the well-being of the animal. Um, yes, they, they always the well-being of the animal should be the, the, the primary goal. Yeah. And so we had posted a video of uh, the German ha Hagebau, I think it's called a garden center in Germany, and they had mm -hmm. a, a beta fish display. And it got a lot of attention because there were people who were so amazed. They thought it's so incredible that that's just the baseline standard mm -hmm. stores. Mm -hmm. You're so used to seeing, you know, these cups. Mm -hmm. and there were Germans who said, what's the big deal? Why is everyone thinking this is interesting? Because they're so used to seeing it that way. So I think it's, it's uh, Germany has a very high standard, which we could learn from. I, I, I think so. Uh, and um, I think we, we should also learn from the animals. So let's <laughs> uh, not learn from each other. They do it like that. They do it like that. But, but uh, it needs a lot of studies. And, and this, is, this is quite, quite interesting. So there have been some studies where they said, uh, do animals prefer a bigger tank or a smaller tank? Uh, a bigger tank is, is, is sometimes better. Not not always. Uh, if you look in into uh, into uh, into nature, some of these wild beta species they live in really small water. But the problem is, uh, so we compare uh, a water where we can look through a, a really clean water uh, in small cups or in small tanks with uh, with a water which is which is dark or which is whitish because there's a lot of clay inside or it's even black water or something. And the animals cannot look that far. So uh, if they are there and, and you find one animal and another animal just a distance of 20 centimeters uh, from apart, then it's it's totally different because the light in, uh, environment is, is, is differently. And so and it's, it's, it's really hard to do really good studies uh, based on, based on, on, on hard effects to see what the animals really want. And uh, there's a lot of, a lot of ideas what to what to look at, but um, sometimes not not every published paper is 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 convincingly for for me. So, and then the last question is just sort of for you: like, is there anything that you're doing in your work or that you're learning about that you think is really interesting that you just want to share with other people? Uh, at the moment, it's uh, for me. It's 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 quite interesting to see on the one side uh, the 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 really cool uh, things that animals do uh, with when they have to cope with with uh, environments that are not that nice. So uh, the ecophysiology that that's always interesting. How they can take up uh, uh, minerals from the water. How they can cope with extreme pH values. How they can cope uh, cope with uh, uh, long time not eating, how they are protecting their fry and something like behavior. That's that's really cool. On the other hand, it's also funny to see uh, what the kind of physiologically and and neurobiology uh, in the fish uh, is developing. And and on and another funny thing is how it is interpreted at this moment. So uh, many, many, uh, many people say that these animals are highly intelligent because, and then they they say something about. I would not call it intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no better word for that. But it's it's still amazing for me, and and I I like to watch fish in their natural environment. But it's uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of a yeah. It, the research goes in one direction and the interpretation goes in, in another direction. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, a, a good thing would be to, to, to spend more time with the fish just observing in a semi-natural environment to learn about the fish, to learn about normal behavior, to learn about animal welfare, to, to learn about uh, animal, uh, uh, how to, how to uh, see whether the animal feels good or does not feel good. That would be good. Spend, spend more time with your fish. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hetz. Um, thank you. Yeah, I've learned so much just in this short time. I know people who watch this 
will too. And uh, I, yeah, it's nice to speak with someone who's so practical and has like the science background and the experience um, to share with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, Dankeschön. Yeah, Dankeschön. Yeah. Thank you very much.